Hello, what's up, friends? Patrick McFarlane here of the Liberty Weekly Podcast, coming at you with another Liberty Daily Vlog series. And uh, this is kind of a new little series I'm doing where I can have little vlogs where I don't talk about the law. And uh, I think it's really interesting. I can bring up little bite-sized points here. But uh, today I wanted to talk a bit about Colin Kaepernick and something that I don't think people are really talking about when it comes to Colin Kaepernick. There have been a lot of um, misgivings, and you see the right being triggered as the rights, basically the new social justice warriors, the social justice warriors of the right, uh, getting triggered and burning their Nike clothing, and we're all having a big laugh about it. But there's a lot of libertarian points that could be brought up uh, when it comes to the Colin Ka Kaepernick debate. We all know, and um, I'll put it here, you can see what I'm looking at here. We all know that um, the NFL sold patriotism to, or excuse me, the Defense Department sold patriotism to the NFL. It wasn't until 2008 or 2009 that the um, Defense Department started paying football teams millions of dollars to have these patriotic displays go on before every game. It's like the Roman Coliseum and the bread and circuses. Uh, I, I don't personally, I don't even think the NFL is interesting anymore. I kind of stopped paying attention after the Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl when I graduated in high school, from high school in 2011. But I, I really think this is a big wedge issue here. And this is not, both sides have it wrong. This is not about uh, Black Lives Matter. It's not about patriotism either. And having this division be in place with Colin Kaepernick and having him sow this division is, I think, counterproductive because on the one side, Colin Kaepernick is, you know, Black Lives Matter is kind of the thing. It's Black Lives Matter. And, you know, the right says, oh, all lives matter. And, you know, you can't disrespect our troops and our police officers because you're just a thug and all this kind of shit. But what is really lost in the weeds is the fact that we have a police problem in this country, that we're living in a police state. We have militarized police officers walking all over the place, tasing little children, tasing grandmothers. These are stories that come out all the time, that we really have a problem with police brutality in this country. And it doesn't matter, and I'm not going to say all lives matter and take the right approach to it, but we have a problem with police in this country. And both sides are being just detracted from the actual issue which is that we have a police problem in this country and it's really call i think sowing this division i don't blame nike for really jumping on this because i think it's a genius marketing move you you most people just don't really care you're going to get the people on the left that really support colin kaepernick and you'll get a few triggered snowflakes on the right now uh, that will be burning their nike gear but just to go through, I have done a lot of work on the problem of police brutality and this creeping police militarization in our country. And I, I will point, point everyone to a documentary that I did called, it was a Liberation Library series, my book review series, where I reviewed John W. Whitehead's um, book, The Emerging American Police State. And he, I document a whole bunch of it in this documentary. I think it's like 40 minutes long with clips and stuff. I did a lot of work on it, but also Mance Rader just had a really good interview with John W. Whitehead talking about this exact problem and how it's really been exacerbated, how I think in the 70s we had a couple hundred SWAT, ta SWAT raids per year. Now we have more than 80,000 SWAT raids per year in this country. Uh, Radley Belko has done a lot of work on how the, the military industrial complex, like when the military will test out these weapons and send them overseas and they're in the battlefield. But when those weapons get retired, they come back to the United States and they're given to police departments who will then use them. Because when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When you're given this equipment, you want to use it. You really do. And so we're, we're getting these police raids where they're using SWAT team raids to serve search warrants and uh, just situations where the SWAT team paramilitarized police, they just don't belong. And I, he kind of outlines that this is getting towards kind of a, um, that in the next 30 years that they're gearing up for mass public disorder. And those are John W. Whitehead's words. So I'll, I, I don't have that pulled up because I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to talk about it. 
Uh, but I'll put that Mance Raider interview in the show notes page or the the screen description page here because I think it's it's super duper interesting. I'll put this story in as well, the Think Progress story about how the NFL sold patriotism to the U.S. military. Um, here's here's you get the lowdown on the Colin Kaepernick story if you really need it. I'll include this in the show notes page as well from the Chicago Trib. Um, but here's an interesting parallel too that I really wanted to get into with this episode, um, with this little vlog is this correlation between Pat Tillman because I've seen a lot of conservatives say oh you know Colin Kaepernick is just a whiny little bitch Pat Tillman is the real hero and Pat Tillman was uh, he was a, a selfless NFL player that sacrificed his entire contract to go and join the military and do something noble but what they don't tell you is that Pat Tillman's death was shrouded in mystery and there's actually some evidence and I'll put this link in the show notes page too, um, right here that U.S. hero Pat Tillman thought Iraq war was a, quote, imperial folly. And I've heard this as well on um, Prof. CJ's podcast where he was interviewing the Army grunt. And I'm creating all these show notes pages for myself, all these notes I have to put in. But um, interesting to document how Pat Tillman, there are signs that he was becoming disgruntled and... Um, did not really like what he was having to do in Iraq and was realizing that it was all a farce. And as we know, Pat Tillman died through friendly fire, but his death itself is shrouded in kind of mystery. And, you know, take take the conspiracy angle all you will with this. I can't say anything conclusively. There's just, as you'll read in these, um, this is a short little article here, but I'll just read it then. So, according to a new book, Tillman, who was killed by friendly fire in 2004 and hailed as an all-American hero by the former president, was disillusioned by Mr. Bush and his administration's, quote, illegal and unjust drive to war. In this book, Where Men Win Glory, The Odyssey of Pat Tillman by John Krakauer, the author relates the strong views of Tillman, who gave up his NFL football career to serve his country, and his brother Kevin, who joined the same Rangers unit. The war, quote, struck them as an imperial folly that was doing long-term damage to U.S. interests, Krakauer claims. Quote, the brothers lamented how easy it had been for Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld to bully Secretary of State Colin Powell, both the houses of Congress and the majority of the American people into endorsing the invasion of Iraq. Tillman was, held, Tillman was held up by the administration as a hero, but it later emerged that the Pentagon had withheld the truth about the circumstances of his death. He was shot by fellow Rangers in an act described as, quote, gross negligence. So I, I guess you could get all conspiratorial and be like, oh, well, the there's it's possible that the U.S. military found out Pat Tillman, who was this huge military football all-American icon, they found out he was disgruntled with the war, so they had him killed. Um, well, that's the worst case scenario, and I don't have any evidence to back that up. But I think even just the the by the book story is enough to really pause and think. You know, gross negligence. Um, so n- I, I just think it's funny that conservatives will point to Pat Tillman and say that he's this all-American icon and that he really deserves our praise and he's way better than Colin Kaepernick, which I don't give a fuck about Colin Kaepernick or football or anything this is like I said just a wedge issue that is to drive people apart and detract them from the real story and the real story is that this is not a black versus white issue this isn't about um, our soldiers it's not about protecting our police officers this is about the fact that we have a police problem in the United States this is not a conservative or a liberal issue and conservatives you know, would probably frame it as a law and order issue. You know, they would probably disagree with me, but I think it stands for itself by objective measures. Go and watch my documentary, Liberation Library 5, The Emerging American Police State. We have a police problem in this country. It was, we have, you know, you'll see the meme, this is the standing army that the founding fathers warned about. Well, I document in here how Bernard Balin, in his very famous book, The Ideological Origins of the American Revolution documents the reasons why the colonists went to war. And one of the biggest ones was the standing army. So, it is very conservative and patriotic to be concerned about militarized police forces and police brutality. I I, I don't know how else, you know, you, you really won't have 
make a lot of leeway with conservatives on that issue because the biggest thing that I've found that separates conservatives from libertarians is that love of police and that uh, law and order bootlicking mindset, this, um, this mindset that, you know, oh, anarchy would be the worst. Um, warlords would take over, you know, as if look around. We, technically, we live in a state of anarchy right now and warlords because there's no well there is the un now so it's quasi anarchy shut up my cat timmy but it's quasi anarchy but there's no one government that oversees all the countries of the world um so yeah i i think that so yeah that that's just the 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 fallacy of oh the warlords would take over but i mean look around you the the biggest warlord the united states has already won we've already divided ourselves up into warlords and i think that that bodes kind kind of an interesting question as to well does does anarchy always lead to a state because people really do i think people really do desire their own servitude i think that's pretty apparent um so then is the question i don't think that makes anarchy not viable um i just think it it really shows that you know states will develop people desire states uh, i think that's an interesting uh problem that we always have to deal with as libertarians because we desire no state we desire freedom uh, a true state of freedom so just a few interesting tidbits here about the the colin kaepernick and you know conservatives who try and call up um Pat Tillman to say that Colin Kaepernick is a whiny little bitch or something. Um, I really don't care, honestly. I don't support Colin Kaepernick. I think, you know, there's the question of whether or not the NFL is actually a private entity or not. Um, because they get so many subsidies from the government and they're, they're you know, they, they get taxpayer funds to build their stadium and everything. So should Colin Kaepernick have a First Amendment right? I don't know. I don't care. Police brutality is a problem. That's about it. That's the whole point. So I really appreciate you stopping by to uh, for this episode of the Liberty Daily Vlog. I'll try and include all those show notes that I uh, breeze through. But check me out on bit.tube. is a new YouTube alternative. I'm uploading some things. That's at bit.tube forward slash Liberty Weekly is how you get to me. Otherwise, check out my Patreon page. Um, there's a new plug. There's a new bio up. There's a new tier level at friend of the show at one or more dollars per month. Check out that Liberation Library episode and also consider signing up for my email list, which I've revived, actually. So you can go to my website, click this link, or go to libertyweekly.net forward slash email. Uh, but thanks for joining me for this Liberty Daily Vlog, and we'll catch you later.